everyone, it's me, Darlene. I am back with another quilt along. I'm so worried about making this commitment, but I really want to do it. So I'm going to do it, and I'm just not going to worry about it like I worry about everything. I want to do some crumb quilting because I miss that. I love doing that, and I haven't done it in months. I don't know, probably since uh, last summer, so maybe like eight or nine months. I know I didn't do it while I was decluttering my house. I didn't sew for quite a while, you know, before my move. So I brought crumbs with me from Maine. I brought um, scraps like this, some actual crumbs there. I think I might even have more. And I have some salvages. We can use salvages in crumb quilting. And then I have like little starter pieces, you know, quite a few of those. And again, I don't know what's in some of the other boxes that I haven't gone through yet, but I have that. And then I have like some bigger pieces that I have put together and uh, still some small ones in here, but you know, things that can be trimmed down. And I have, again, you know, a nice little stack of that. And then I have some of the little squares that I had trimmed because I used to make like, I don't remember how many, and put them on eBay because it gave me a, a chance to just sit and do what I love so much, piecing these little scraps together. And, but then again, you know, I was moving, I was decluttering, so, I didn't get around to, uh, you know, putting these guys on eBay. So maybe I will use them in this project so that I can, you know, put them to use. Thing is, is it's hard for me to get rid of um, any kind of crumb quilt top that I would make. So I don't know if I'm going to want to put it on eBay because I love the looks of crumb quilts. However, I don't need another quilt top. I have a couple that I couldn't part with. One was my sampler quilt. I put so much into that and I just wanted to keep it, but I'll never turn it into a quilt. So let me, let me see. Let me see if that text was from Derek. My new phone that I hate with a passion because it's big. His new video is doing good. Good, good. He was in a slump there. We both were. And we're both trying to get out of the slump. I've warned him repeatedly that that happens and that it's normal and that, you know, it comes back. You know, I've been doing this seven and a half years now. So I know. I know how it goes. Crumbing. If you don't have all this stuff and you feel overwhelmed by even seeing this stuff, you don't need this much stuff. <laughs> if you know nothing about crumb quilting, I have good news for you. I have an entire series. That's why I, you know, said to myself, I can do this because I don't have to teach it all again. I've already done that. So if you know nothing while you're waiting for the next video, you can go binge watch Crumb Quilting Adventure or the Crumb Quilt Adventure. I think that's what it is. Playlist. I will have the link in the description of this video. I'll try to remember to put it at the end of this video on the end screen. It's always on my blog in the sidebar. Uh, it's easy to find. And go check that out and watch some videos. There's so many ways to do crumb quilting. And I will be, you know, showing some things during this series. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll even discover something new or come up with something new. But I'm just excited. Now, here's how it's going to work. I have a design, but I need to count all the, the sizes of the pieces and, and figure that out. I might make some changes. But we're going to be making crumb blocks in different sizes. And that's going to be put together with sashing. And I'm going to do a kind of a wide sashing. Did I decide on, uh, I'm gonna be cutting two inch strips for that because it's just, I'm just used to cutting two inch strips. So the sashing would be like an inch and a half between the blocks. Some blocks might be square, some might be vertical, tall rectangles horizontal re rectangles. It's just going to be all different. And I haven't decided yet how I'm going to make a tall rectangular 
quilt block. I don't necessarily want to make like, um, you know, this and then this. I mean, we certainly can. You can just make quilt blocks and sew them together. But I'm going to try to come up with a way so that this the connect isn't just a straight line across. I don't want it to just look like three or four squares sewn together. So I'll angle it or whatever. These are things that I can show you along the way. Now, I want to tell you to start gathering of the goods. Cotton. Any print. The more prints, the better. If you don't have a lot of prints, don't worry about that. You can even go buy some quarter yard cuts or the smallest um, uh, yardage that your fabric store will allow. Some will go to less than a quarter. And, you know, just get 10 prints or something like that. And, you know, just play with it. It would look cool. Just pick cool colors that you like. Um... Or you can uh, cut up clothing, cotton clothing. Cotton poly blend is okay. If you have something that is a print, a scrap, or whatever that you absolutely love, but it's stretchy or slinky, back it with some iron-on stabilizer. Use it. Use whatever you want. You can use regular quilt cotton, cotton poly blend, flannel, batik, uh, selvages can go in, especially if you want to top stitch something together. That's a cool thing. We'll be doing some of that, I hope. And what are other kinds of fabric? You could put little pieces of denim in there if you want. Anything goes, no rules, especially with me. There's no rules at all with me. <laughs> Sizes, anything you can have a big scrap i'm sure i show in some videos how you can start with big pieces so that it's easy to sew but then when you're done it looks like little tiny pieces let me see if i have an example of like little tiny pieces right here see these this little row of, of little squares here there's something very tiny right there I didn't just take that little piece, I'm sure, and sew that. That was like a strip set. Let me see if I have an example of a strip set. See, here's like a strip set. Let's see, one with more. Let's see, I'm trying to find a good example. Well, oh, here's a, here's a strip set that I put together with very narrow strips, and it's part of another piece. This was probably trimmed off something. All right, so uh, like here's a strip set. I had put a bunch of little strips together and then I've been cutting and using that. Now I don't cut a little narrow strip and attach that to another piece. You put your piece down and you sew and then you open it and then you trim after the fact. So these are the tips that you will learn um, if you watch my series. You're gonna learn all kinds of shit that you probably never knew about crumb quilting. Most of the people who follow me have already been addicted for a while and they know the ropes and so it's going to be very easy for them. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to just, uh, you know, beg you to gather stuff. <laughs> I am trying to come up with some scrap bags uh, and I just haven't had the time because I was so involved in a sale that my granddaughter and I were putting together, Skylar and I. That's over, and I, I'm finally coming out of it. <laughs> the stress was intense, but it was awesome. It was awesome, and I, and I enjoyed it very much. So what was I saying? Oh, yeah, scrap bags. I want to come up with something, and I'm not sure yet what I want to do. It might be sold by the weight and just a mix of pieces. That would probably be the easiest. And so it would be something really cool for those of you who make scrappy quilts and, but, you know, really good for crumb quilting. You want strips. Strips are really good ways to start your crumb blocks. Again, go watch the other series and it will bring that series back to life, maybe. Maybe YouTube would like that if you guys go and watch that. And, um... Just get your stuff together. Oh, and try to find some novelty pieces. Like if you have a, a, a partial uh, panel, like Lorelei dogs or Lorelei cats, that kind of thing. You can use partials, and it's really, really cute. 
like in a Christmas quilt. You could have half of a snowman tilted over. I mean, it's just, it's really cool. Oh, and speaking of that, if you have holiday scraps and you tuck them in and they're narrow enough, uh, you know, like, you know, something like this in the center, you can even go narrower by starting with bigger pieces and then uh, sewing in a way where that strip is going to come out looking really narrow. You can't tell a lot of times if it's like a Christmas print or a Valentine's Day print, stuff like that. So you can hide things in there like that. Like, oh, just, I just love it. Like, look, look, look at all the little pieces in there. Um, <laughs> gather your stuff. Try to find unique things or just fabric that has, uh, you know, prints that you like that maybe there's, a, a, you know, novelty like cats or dogs. Again, doesn't have to be panel type things. Uh, what else do I want to tell you? I'm not going to rush this. Even if I'm anxious, I want to take my time. I want to give myself permission to do just maybe one per week on this series if I want. And if something happens and I can't, I don't want to worry about that either. That sucks the life out of me when I start to worry. So I'm just going to do the best that I can. Of course, my goal is always to complete the series, and I will, unless something, you know, just would happen that wouldn't allow me to do that. If anything happens that for some reason it could not be completed, or that you make a few pieces and it's just not for you, uh, don't worry about it. Those pieces can be cut down and used in small projects. It's not going to be wasted. Even if we're making odd size pieces, they can be put together. You can continue to add to them and all that stuff. I'm going to be aiming for throw size. Um, I don't know, maybe a little bit bigger than a throw. I always like like 40 by 60. I like things to be longer than wide, but I also just I just need to put it together and see. So it'll be something like that. And I always tell everyone, if you need something bigger, you can just continue on your own and keep adding on. So I hope that you want to follow along. Or if you don't want to get started until you see how it's going to go, you can watch a few of the episodes and then decide. All right? So I will be back soon with some sizes and I would like to let you know in advance for those of you who know how to do this, um, you know, I can show you the first block or two and then say uh, these are the size blocks you're going to need for the next one. But I'm not going to show you the actual diagram until we have all our pieces made. So it's kind of like you're just taking a chance. We will be slapping it all together at the end, and that's when you'll see how it's going to come out. All right? Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you want to do this uh, quilt along, and I'll be back with more soon. Bye. Oh, there will be videos in between. I'm not doing just that, okay? So I don't want everybody else to unsubscribe and leave thinking that's all that's going on. I'm going to be spacing that particular series out, but there will be my other stuff in between. All right? Bye.